Blessed be God who has brought us all up alive today. Thank God for it. But endeavor to live your life unto him. Because if you live outside of God, the life is worth nothing. Whatever you get in this world is a passing thing. We all know that nobody is alive that is 200 years old. Which means you have a short span of time on earth. And then when you go from here, what happens? Forget the theories of the occultists and all of the workers of iniquity about how you come to the end a million times. You are not coming back. It is appointed unto man once to die thereafter. Judgment. There's no coming back. Now what happens after the judgment to you? Will you have consigned yourself to condemnation? Today we are going to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and we are reading from verse 9 to verse 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 9 to 12. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This scripture is particularly important for those who say, oh, God, choose some people to go to hell and choose the others to go to heaven. Lie. This scripture makes a lie of it. You know what he's saying? When you refuse to live in righteousness, you have made yourself a son of hell, a daughter of hell. You have become a human being walking under condemnation already because you refuse to obey the truth of God. And there is a catch here. This says, you know what we believe? The interpreted scripture. Somebody reads the scripture and gives you his interpretation. That's what you take. Ah, no, my pastor said that one. It cannot be wrong. And you have all of these so-called pastors who go around saying, you commit sin, no problem. Grace covers it. You do wrong, no problem. The righteousness from heaven has covered you. What? The other man commits sin, goes to hell. I commit sin. I don't go to hell simply because I tell myself I'm in church and there is some righteousness from heaven that sets me free. There's some madness to it. Leave those interpreted trash. Follow the word of God as it is. And thank God Jesus didn't say you'll be judged by the words of men. He said you'll be judged by his own words, the scripture. Jesus is the word of God. Genesis to Revelation, that's Jesus. And that's what will judge you, not the interpretations of your pastor or your own or anybody else for that matter. Have you chosen to believe the truth? And the truth says, be ye righteous. Be ye holy. Even as I am holy. That's what God says. Living in sin, is that your definition of holiness? Because this thing is a choice. You choose to live in unrighteousness. You are condemned. You are heading for condemnation. And you know what it says in verse 11? God sends a delusion unto you so that you believe a lie. So when that pastor tells that crazy story, you believe. Why? Because you have tuned your mind not to follow righteousness. When your entire mind is focused on living in sin, uh, you get those who tell you that sin is right. And once you are walking in that path, condemnation is totally over your life. There's almost no redemption for some people because they are so steeped in unrighteousness. I am not saying that people don't make mistakes. We all do make mistakes. As the scripture says, in many things we offend God. But it says, if you commit sin, we have an advocate with the Father. The righteous Jesus, if you confess your sin, why would you commit sin and say it means nothing? Instead of being remorseful, instead of being repentant, the broken spirit and the contrite heart, God does not reject. But which one is the broken spirit? The one that commits a sin 
and knows that it is a sin and falls back to God, pleading for mercy. Not the one that says, oh, no, I have righteousness imputed unto me. Yes, there is righteousness imputed. Without that, no man will stand before God. But thereafter, it says, show fruit worthy of repentance. What kind of fruit does your life show? Oh, okay. God sent delusion. That is why the people believe the lie. That's not true. It says the delusion is coming to you because, first of all, you don't want to develop the love for the truth of God. Is the love for the truth of God in you? Are you pursuing the truth of God in everything that you do? Learn to pursue the truth of God. Let this day be a day of thinking for you, serious thinking. Let this day bring a turnaround to your mind that everything you want to do, ask yourself, does this thing that I'm doing portray that I have the love of the truth of God? Is this the truth of God that I am establishing in what I am doing or saying? When you get to that point, you will check your activities. You will check the things you do. You draw lines. No, I don't want to pass this point. I have gone bad up to this point. That's where it ends. I am turning away from here. Let's get into that frame of mind, and it will be wonderful. Because there are two things, condemnation and acceptance. If God is not condemning you, he accepts you. And my word of today is that you might receive acceptance from God. That you walk away from everything that is a falsehood. You walk away from everything that rejects righteousness. Live righteously, live a holy life unto God, and gain God's reception from today. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.